This is the demo of what we are going to create. On left, there is a client side which will be monitored by the admin on the right side. At bottom of the client side, there is a widget for a chat. If the user has not initialized a chat, then he will be asked to enter his name and email so he can be contacted later. When start chat is clicked, he will be displayed on the admin side in real time, without having to refresh the page. Admin can see his IP address, country name, previous page, current page, and browser. When a user navigates to a new page, it will automatically be updated on the admin side in real time. On click history, the admin can see the navigation history of a user in a bootstrap modal. How many pages the user has visited in this session. And this modal will also be updated in real time. Users can also chat with the admin. Admin will receive a notification sound and on clicking chat, he can see the chat with the client. And the chat will be updated in real time on both sides. All chats will be saved in the MySQL database, so they can be viewed later. So let's start creating this. We have three folders, one for admin, one for a client, and one for the Node.js server for real-time chat and it will also handle all the requests. In the server folder, create a file named server.js. Then open your command prompt or terminal in your Windows or Mac. Open the server folder in the terminal using cd double quotes and drag and drop your server folder. Then run no daemon server, js to start the server. If you do not have no daemon, then run the command npm install g no daemon. Now install the express and http modules. Then start the server again. Now include the express module in your project. And create an instance of it. Then create an install of HTTP module with an instance of express. Then start the server on port 3000. You will see that message in your terminal when the server starts running. Now install socket IO module for real-time communication. Then start the server again. Now include the socket IO module in your project. And your website might be in PHP, so we need to allow cross-origin resource sharing on this server. Or you can paste your web URL here. Now we will create a function that will be called whenever a new client is connected with this server. Check if the server is running. Now we need to connect the client with this server. You will get this user activity monitor folder from this link. You can download it, it contains all the files you will need to integrate this into your website. So in the footer of your client side, including jQuery. Bootstrap. Socket I.O.
In monitor, JS, we will create that file in a moment. I am appending the timestamp at the end of the file name so it will never be cached by the browser. Now we need to create this file in the user activity monitor folder. To connect your PHP project with this Node.js server, you need to get your IP address. In your terminal, write if config if you are using a Macintosh. Or IP config if you are using Windows or Ubuntu. This will be your IP address after INET. Or it may be IPv4 on some computers. Then start the server again. Create an object named monitor. It will have a socket IO object in the URL of your Node.js server. Create a function named init for initialization. Set value for socket IO using IO function. This function exists in socket IO.js file. And in your footer file, call this init function when the page is fully loaded. And in your terminal, you will see a message that the user is connected along with his socket ID. Now we need to create a widget for getting username and email and start chat. So include a CSS file named monitor.css, I will create that in a moment. And also include font awesome to show icons to minimize or maximize chat. Now create a chat widget. It will be a bootstrap panel. This will be the title of the widget. This will be an icon to minimize or maximize the chat. And this will be the body of the panel where we will display chat messages and also a form to get a user name and email. When this form submits, we will call a function named initialize chat. An input field for name. Another input field for email. And a submit button. The footer of the panel contains the form for sending messages. Input field for writing a message. On focus will be called when this text field is clicked, then we will slide up this widget. and a submit button that will send the message.
Now create this monitor.css file. First, we will remove the padding so there will be no space between the widget and browser screen. and we will fix its position on the bottom right. Then we will give a border radius of 5 pixels on the top left and top right. And 0 pixel on the bottom right and bottom left. The icon to minimize will have a padding of 2 pixels on top and bottom and 10 pixels on left and right. Give the widget a light gray background color and a maximum height of 300 pixels. The header of the widget will have a dark gray background color. Incoming messages will appear on the left side. And outgoing messages will appear on the right side. and each message will have a white background, rounded corners, and a little shadow. And margin will be 0 on top and right, 0.2 rem on the bottom, and also 0 on left. And the time of the message will be displayed in smaller font. If there is an image in the chat, like the user profile image, then it will be on right for incoming messages. and on left for outgoing messages. And the time for sent messages will always be on the right side. The scroll bar inside the chat widget will be light gray. So the widget is displayed, but we need to slide up the widget when the input field has a focus, and to minimize and maximize the widget. So open monitor.js, and create the function to slide up the widget when the input field has a focus. Now we need to create a function to minimize the widget. 
So do that in your monitor.js file. Now we need to create a function to initialize the chat. First, we will prevent the form from submitting. Then we will create variables for the current path. Previous URL, IP address, country, and browser information. Then we will get the values in these variables. When the user initializes the chat, then we will get his IP address and browser information. First, display a message and disable the submit button. We will create this function in a moment. After getting the information, we will send an event to the server. Get the title of the page. and send all information in an object. Create the function to get an IP address. We will send an Ajax request to the Cloudfare website to get IP address and country, and browser information. When the response is received from the server, it will be a string. So we will display that in the console. Then call the callback function. We need to extract this IP address value. So we will split with IP equal to first. Then split with next variable which was TS. Finally, we remove the empty spaces and save them in the IP address variable. The same goes for getting browser information. And same goes for getting country code.
Now we need to create this event in our Node.js server. The object is receiving correctly on the server side. We need to save the user record in the MySQL database when the chat is initialized. So install MySQL module. This will be our database. Include MySQL module. Create a connection with the database. The error will be null if the database is successfully connected. We will create a table where we will store all the information of the user who has initiated the chat. And we will also create a table where we will store all the chat messages. The sender and receiver will be zero if the message is sent from admin. Otherwise, it will be the value of the user from the chat user's table. We will be using JSON Web Token to authenticate the user if he visits the website again. So he won't have to enter his name and email every time. Install JSON Web Token module. And include it. It also requires a secret string to generate an access token. Check if the user's record already exists in the database. Generate an access token using his email. If the record does not exist, then save it in the database.
and send the event back to the client with an access token. The client can store this access token for later use. Otherwise, we will simply update the socket ID, access token, current and previous path. We will also update the updated at the field so we can display the new users on top of the admin side. So the record has been saved correctly. On the admin side, we need to show a list of all users. So in your admin panel, in the footer file, include jQuery and Bootstrap. In socket I.O. for real-time communication. In notify J.S. to display notification layout. And we will create tracker.js in a moment. Create an object named Tracker. Create socket IO object. Admin socket ID. And Node.js server. Create an init function the same as in Monitor.js. Initialize IO object. Send an event on the server to get the socket ID. We have created a new file named monitoring.php. When this page loads, then we will initialize the tracker. Now create this event listener in the server. We will save the admin socket ID and send it back. To get all users we need to send an Ajax request. But first, we need to allow resource sharing on the server side.
create a hidden input field with an ID of admin. This will be used for server-side validation. Create an Ajax to get all the users. The response will be in JSON string, so we will decode it. If there is an internal server error, then we will display that error message in the console. Create a form data object. Append the admin ID in it. And send the Ajax request. To receive form data values in Node.js, we have to use a module named Express Formatable, so install it. And include it. And use it in app middleware. Now create a post route to get the admin ID. You can hard code this value because only the admin will have this access. Get all users sorted by updated at the field so the new users appear at the top. Loop through all the records and add the socket ID and path variables in each record. And send the response back as an array. If the admin is not validated then we will send an empty array. So the record is being fetched perfectly, now we need to show it on a table. This is the heading. This is the breadcrumb that is usually used to tell the navigation. Create a table. Set the headings. In Tbody, we will display all users. Create an array for users. Loop through all users. And render each user. We will create a separate function for displaying the user because we will use it in multiple places. First, check if the user already exists in the user's array. If already exists, then we will add it to history. And update the variables in user's array. It does not exist then we will save it in the array.
The messages array will hold all the chat messages with the admin. Get the user's list tbody tag node. If the user exists, then update the values in the table in real time. If not, then we will create a new row in the table. Create a button to view the navigation history of the user. And a button to show the chat with this user. Then we will prepend this node in the user's list. And it is data.email. So the users are displayed correctly. Now we need to make it so that when the user navigates, it should be updated automatically. So first when the record is saved in the database, then send an event to admin. And do the same when the record is updated. And in tracker.js. Keep listening to that event from the server. When this event is received, then we will render the user. Then in monitor.js on the client side, create a key for storing local storage. And when the user joined the event is received. Then we save the user object in local storage. Remove the disabled attribute from initialize chat submit button and also set the text to the default value. And empty the values of the form name and email field. And hide the form. Then in the init function, check if the user has initialized the chat, then we will hide the initialization form. and get the user. We will create this function in a moment. Create a global variable that will store the user object. Then create that function that will send an Ajax request.
First, we will display the value in the console to see if we are getting it right. Send the access token in the request. Then create this post root in server.js. Search the user using his access token. And send the response back to the client. So it has been fetched correctly. If the user exists then we will save that in the user chat global object. And initialize the chat. So it is being updated on the admin side, now we need to make it real time. First, move this admin socket ID variable outside of the socket on the connection. So it is real time now. Now we need to show the navigation history. In monitoring.php, create a bootstrap modal. This is the heading. and a button to close the modal. A table, headings. And table body will have dynamic content. It will be rendered using JavaScript. Create user object variable on top of tracker.js. Then create a function named show history. Get the user object who is clicked.
get the user's history array and reverse it so that the latest navigation will appear at the top and show in tbody of history modal. and show the modal. Now we need to make it real-time too. As soon as the user navigates to another page, it will be prepended in the table. In render user function, check if the user object is not null. Check if the rendered user is currently being viewed by the admin. Then prepend that in tbody of history modal. So it is working fine now. Now we need to add the chat feature. In monitor.js, create an array for messages. Create a function to render a message. Convert the timestamp into hours, minutes, and seconds format. If the message is sent from the user, then it will be displayed on the right side. Else it will be displayed on the left side. And prepend the message in the chat widget panel. Then create a function to send the message. If the user has not initialized the chat, then prevent the message from sending. Then push the message in the messages array. And emit the event to the server that a new message is sent to admin. and display the message on the client side. And empty the message input field.
Now we need to store it in the database. In server.js listen to that event. Check if the user exists in the database. If yes, then save the message in the chat user messages table. So it is saving correctly. Now we need to show the previous messages when the page loads. Cut this code, we will place it in another place. Call a function name to get to chat with the admin. Create this function. Send an Ajax request to get the previous chat of the user. Create this post root in server.js. Check if the user exists. Then get his chat with admin using an ID. Create an object named me. It will be true if the message was sent by me, and false if it is sent by admin. And send the response back. Now we need to show the chat on the admin side. In monitoring.php, create a bootstrap modal to show all chats. Heading And a button to close the modal. The modal body will be created dynamically using JavaScript. Footer will have an input field and a submit button to send the messages to the client.
Create a function in tracker.js on the admin side. Get the IP address and email of the selected user. Get the user object from the user's array. Show a loading message in the modal body. Send an AJAX request to get a chat with the selected user. We will be using email to search for the user. Create this function to render the message. If the message is sent by admin, then it will be displayed on right. Client messages will be displayed on the left side. And that will be appended in the modal body. Now create this post root in server.js. Get admin ID and user email. Check if the admin is valid. Check if the user exists. Get all his chat with the admin. Check if the message is sent by the admin or the client. Now we need to send the message to the client. Create a function to send the message. Send the event to the server.
push the new message in the messages array. Convert timestamp into hours, minutes, and seconds format. Render the message in the list. And empty the input field for the message. Create this event in server.js. Do your admin validation logic here, it might be different for your project. You can mention it in the description if you are having a problem adding the admin validation. Check if the user exists in the database. Insert in chat user messages table. Set sender value to zero, which means it is sent by admin. Delete the admin ID variable from the data object because the data object will be sent back to the client that a new message is sent from admin. Send the event to the user that a new message is sent. I am going to comment on this logic because it is not used in my project but it might be needed in your project. Now we need to make it real-time too. In monitor.js on the client side, inside initialize chat function. Listen for incoming messages from admin. Then slide up the chat widget. And render the message. Now in server.js, inside new message event. Send the event to admin as well. When a new message is received from the client, we want to play a notification sound because that is important if you are creating a real-time customer support system. Creating an audio object in tracker.js. Initialize it inside the init function. You will find this file new message.mp3 from this link. When a new message is received from the client. Get the user from the user's array. Append the message in the messages array.
Display the Notify JS Alert notification at the row of the user. Then play the sound. Then simply render the message. In monitor.js inside get chat with admin function, when all messages are displayed. Then initialize the chat widget. This is the code we removed from the init function previously in this tutorial. If you simply want all the source code, you can purchase it for just $20. And you can use it in as many websites as you want. 